Hi, welcome back. I've got to the stage now where very few problems are still outstanding that need to be done on this radio. The uh, last one was the uh, oscillation that I was getting on the uh, on the output and um, it was very very irritating. Quite a high value as well. I measured about 17 volts at the speaker and uh, I overcame that by first of all finding the source which was the feedback transformer and um, by bypassing the secondary um, we got rid of the oscillation. I'm now on the lookout for a replacement transformer to do the final repair on that but it doesn't affect the sound uh, at least in, the, in any obvious way. The sound is great, it's coming out fine and um, so I'm happy with that for now. The next issue, the final issue, um, was the uh, shortwave. We had no shortwave and that is the K over there. We had no shortwave at all and I went about it in the usual way. Um, I tried uh, first of all changing all the capacitors as I was going to do anyway and I hoped that that would have an effect. It did not. I checked for any contact resistors that were not uh, were not uh, functioning correctly. That search proved fruitless. So the next thing would uh, that would make sense is that some contact was not being made properly. And I went looking for that. And the first thing I went looking for was to see if I had any uh, oscillation, if I had the oscillator working on shortwave. The way to check for a functioning oscillator or a failed oscillator is to put it in a band that does work and um, in this case I know that medium wave works that's the one I have selected there. I have the volume on zero because we don't really need to hear anything. What we're going to do is probe the circuitry here with the scope and what I do with the probe of the scope is just create that loop over there and what that's doing is it's creating a small antenna effectively and whatever that antenna picks up it will reflect on the scope and um, the scope is then set at in this case I've got it set at 200 nanoseconds per division time base and then what I do is I probe or move this probe across the section and watch the scope. And this is what we get. If I move the probe to certain points here, I see a voltage, I see a sine wave. I look for the point where it is highest and leave it there. So now I've rested my probe. Be very careful that you don't short anything over there. I've rested my probe on that circuitry and I'm getting an oscillation. I'm getting the oscillator. And I can see that because it is at about 1.5 megahertz over there. And if I tune if I tune it, you can see this oscillation's frequency is changing. What I'm doing is by tuning the tuning capacitor, I am moving the oscillating oscillation frequency, which is exactly what the tuning does. It changes the frequency, it adds and subtracts from the intermediate frequency, and the result is that I get my signal. So I expect a frequency here which will be within the um, medium wave band frequency plus or minus 472 kilohertz which is the ith frequency of the radio. So what I have here is 1.3 megahertz which is within that range. Here I've set the dial to approximately 1 megahertz on medium wave. And as you can see, what I'm getting down there is 1.472 megahertz, which is near as damn it 
1 megahertz plus the IO frequency. And uh, as I mentioned, if I change this, it increases. Now, I don't need to do this, but if I looked on the other side, if I looked at the dial, I know that I would be set at approximately 1.1 megahertz on the medium wave because I have 1.572 approximately on the oscillator. So I have an oscillation on medium wave. If I try long wave, I have a similar thing here. Let me change the time base. There's long wave. 760 or so. So I'm pretty sure that the dial will show something in the order of what is it? Four, 300 kilohertz difference, thereabouts. So as you can see, I can get this to work. And what I did then to find shortwave, to determine whether the oscillator was working for shortwave, was precisely the same thing, except I then moved it to the shortwave. And what I get on the shortwave now is this. It's working. I have shortwave working perfectly. There's the oscillation frequency. It's altering as I tune up and down. You can see the frequency changing slightly. And so I have oscillation. And the way I found this was by using the old trick of prodding this whole setup here with a stick, or at least something that uh, is non-conductive. You should be very careful that you don't create any shorts when you do that. But what I did was look at there. I had nothing on there. I had no oscillation. And then I gently started to probe here. And the reason I probed in specific points is I checked where which switches this button affected. This shortwave push button affects various switches here. And I'm not sure that we can see them move, but I can see them underneath. That one there is moving, that one there is moving, and there's two more over here. You can see these you can see these cogs are connected in here. And this one moves and that one moves. So I knew it had to be one of these contacts. And I started pushing them slightly, just very gently, just pushing them in and out till the oscillation appeared and disappeared. It got to the point where it was consistently on there. And I knew that it was some kind of dirt corrosion on these, these contacts in the various points. I used some deoxid or deoxidizing contact cleaner spray, activated the switch numerous times. Initially it was failing and coming back and failing and coming back till finally it continued to work. And now it works consistently and I've got to tell you the result is amazing. Reception on this thing is amazing, especially uh, since one doesn't expect too much from shortwave nowadays and especially where I am, um, the result is really, really good. So that final problem is solved. We have shortwave uh, as well as all the other bands working perfectly. So the next stage is to look at the alignments on the dials and also to try and uh, optimize the alignment of the IF uh, sections to ensure that we get the best signal possible from any position on the dial on any of the bands. And that's what we'll do next.